And for the reach analysis, we're going to do that in the cell template. So EMDR 4501 cell template. If you're in my class, the link to this is on the D2L homepage. If you're not in my class, you should still be able to search for it. Um, this is a public document. You can see the world icon, so it should just be able to be searchable. So what you'll want to do is take the template, right-click, copy workspace. Okay, copy your own so that you don't mess up the template. And call it whatever you want. Say, um, student cell check, um, name it whatever the homework tells you to name it. Make sure your, your name is in there somewhere so that I know who to attribute the grading to. Or if you're not in the class, you know, just name it whatever you want. So we'll create copy. And we'll go inside of it. Student cell check. So this is the pick part studio, but we'll go over to where the cell has. And as it's loading here, you can see this actually kind of looks like a horrid, nasty mess. Um, with all of those mate connectors there, um, those show the points the robot can work to, but if we press the letter K, they all disappear. Sometimes that's, that's easier if you don't want to see all of those. So it looks like there's lots of errors here. More than one part inside is fixed. Okay, that's that's fine. Those are just actually warnings. So what we what you want to do is delete the robot that's in here, put in your own robot, and see if your own robot can reach the correct positions. We'll take robot, delete, and it disappeared. So now we'll go to insert. Other documents, okay, other documents recently opened. Okay, here's the one that we just did. Take that, go to not part studios, but assemblies. Click the robot, click the check mark. All right, so here it shows up in the spot that we wanted it to be. Um, so we need to actually mate that. So let's fasten bottom of that robot to here. We'll just call that base. Okay, so now the robot's on there. Uh, everything looks good. And if we want to see if the robot can reach a specific part, then we would mate the end of the robot to the part that we want to touch. So first, let's just, let's look at that. Okay. Looks like all the joint angles are zero. Um, if we wanted to, we could click this little side arrow and you can see all of those and go down to mate features. Each of these, we can say, okay, J1, roll around, look like, okay, that's at zero. And then, um, so J2, also at zero and so on. You can check all of them. We'll make this one a home. So name positions, home. We'll say apply named position or update name position because this is our new robot. So all of these, um, let's see, we'll just delete some of these. We don't really need those. Delete pose one. All right. So we just deleted all of those other positions because this is a different robot and so none of those other positions would have worked. So if we wanna make sure that, see what can this robot touch, then let's say we want, if we're trying to touch the point, say one, 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 we can go and put in a mate connector. So mate connector, Origin entity, we can actually just click origin there, origin Z axis, and move, we'll just put the coordinates that we want. So let's say we want it in one in the X, one in the Y, and one in the Z. Okay, so there it is. We wanna see, um, can the robot touch that? So we'll just say, we'll just call this one, one, one. So if we wanted to see if the robot could touch that particular point, 
then we will do a Revolut mate. And we choose a Revolut mate because the end joint six on the robot, that wrist can rotate. So Revolut mate, connect the wrist of the robot. We wanna make sure we actually get the end of it. Okay. That, and then we'll click on the mate connector here. Now, if you look at that, it looks like it fell off the robot and it's on the wrong side. So if it falls off the robot, then that is a sign that your robot can't touch that point correctly. So you might need a new robot. But if we zoom, if we zoom in on here, we can see that it actually looks like this is upside down. So we just click the flip primary axis button, goes the other way. And let's see if the robot can touch that point. Yes, it can. Okay, good. So the robot can touch that point. Now, um, we can undo that mate and call this point one one one. So mate, let's see where did it go? Okay, so we have mate features. Uh, we have this Revolute one. We'll actually want to either delete or suppress that, suppress that, and then name a position and we'll call one, 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 press enter, made a new position, done. So let's make sure we can actually go back to home, right click, apply name position, home has been applied. All right, so you can see that the robot touches that point. So then you could go through and um, mate the robot to any other points in the cell that you wanted to check. So you want to make sure that it can reach your closest point, your farthest away point, your highest point, your lowest point, anything like that. Um, you know, make sure that the robot can touch it in the right position and orientation. So this is a helpful simulation tool to use before you actually go and purchase that robot so that you know it can touch all of the right positions. All right, so let's say that instead of just mating the robot to a specific point, we want to see if it can grab a part from one area of the cell and move it to another area of the cell for planning the robot's workspace and seeing if this robot is the right one for the job. So what we're going to do first is basically the plan is to grab this green cylinder. Say we want the robot to move the green cylinder from the po a point on the conveyor and put it into the box. Maybe it's doing some kind of like packing thing. So in order to do that, we'll mate the cylinder to the end of the robot so that the robot's holding it. And then we'll attach that point to different places and see if the robot can reach it. So first we need to mate the end of cylinder to the end of the robot. Now you can see that we don't see the mate connector on the end of the robot. Um, it shows up if we try to actually do a mate, it'll show up. But if we want to see that connector all the time, then what we need to do is, um, first we'll just put a mate connector on the tip of the robot. So if we want to change anything about the robot, including putting a mate connector on its tip, once we've already put the robot into our assembly, we need to go back to the original robot document. So, we will right click on that and then open linked document. So it opens here. And you can see up here it says versions or view only, return to main. So the version that's in the assembly is just whatever version we save. Now, if we want to start making edits, we'll click return to main. So then we'll go and put um, into the parts folder and into link six, we will put a mate connector on that tip. So we'll go over, I think it is here, mate connector or control M is the shortcut. Click on the end of the robot. And we can call this mate connector wrist. All right, so now that we've put that on there, then we need to reversion the document. So we'll go over to the left sidebar, create version, V2, for description, we'll just put added mate connector 
if you missed. And create that. Okay, so now we can X out of that. And if we go back to the robot breach, uh, the robot is there. Let's refresh and see if it realizes that there was a change. Okay, so now you see the robot has this little bubble. Version assembly from other document with newer version. Version one equals version two. So right click and update link document. V1 to V2, update all. Okay, and now we see that main connector there. If there were other changes, we would see those too. All right. So next thing we're going to do is mate, um, let's see, mate the cylinder to the end of the robot. So we'll just fasten it there. Take that to there, and you can see that it's pointed the wrong way, so we just flip primary axis. There it goes. And we'll say, we'll just call this mate cylinder. Okay, so now that the robot has the cylinder connected to it, um, we want to see if we can move that cylinder, say, from the conveyor into the box. So what we're going to do is do a revolute mate from the bottom of the cylinder to the conveyor. So let's just say middle of the conveyor, can the robot touch it? Now that's upside down, so we flip it. And we check. And it looks like the robot can reach that. So we can suppress that mate. And then go over to named positions, and maybe we'll call this pick conveyor. Okay, so now we'll go back to the home position, and we want to see if that robot can place the cylinder into the box. So we have a part in the box already. So maybe we want the robot to put the cylinder on top of that, or maybe we want to put it somewhere else. Um, whatever you want to do. And then, so go to Revolute Mate, click the end of the cylinder, find a place in the box to put it. So if we want to be really sure, then we'd try to put it in the farthest corner away of the box. So let's try that. Um, looks like that is sideways. Okay, so to change it from being sideways, what we do is click Reorient Secondary Axis. Okay, that didn't really work, so X out of that, we probably click somewhere wrong. Go back again to Revolute Mate. Click the end here. And then Go down to the bottom. That, okay, that looks better, but it's upside down. Reorient primary axis and click check. So you could see here what happened. Now there's some errors and now the end of the robot fell off. So that's a sign that the robot cannot touch this position. So that means we probably need to move that box somewhere. So we either need to move the box closer to the robot or the box can't be moved. We need a different robot um, or somehow change things around. But what we can do is check and see if we just guide the robot a little bit closer, if it'll figure out how to get there. And if it doesn't, then we'll just move the box. Okay, so we will, um, let's see, suppress that mate and we'll rename it just call it a uh, box and then we'll call this other one conveyor so we don't get confused. All right, so a way to move the robot, we can either take the tip of the robot and kind of drag it around. 
well, let's see. So it stopped here. You can see the robot's in a singularity position. It's not going to be able to touch that spot without like really doing some damage. So we need to move this box. So let's uh, put the robot back to the home position. And then maybe we can move the box. So we'll click on the box. And it looks like it's over here. It's called bin. It is fixed. So right click, unfix. And let's see, we can put the box wherever we want. But if we want to actually like put it in a specific location instead of just dragging it around, um, we would mate it. But for now, we'll just drag it around. So let's say go to top. We can click on it and then we can just drag it around. So maybe here would be an easier spot for the robot to touch. Um, okay, so then we'll go back and right click, fix the box. Okay, and then we'll go back here and unsuppress the box mate and see if it works. Yes, it works. Okay, so the robot can touch this now. All right, so right click, suppress, and then we'll make a named position for that and we'll call it place box. Done. Close that. And so if we want to see where exactly the tip of the robot is, now that we have that mate connector on there, we can just click on that mate connector. And down here at the bottom, it shows the XYZ coordinates of the robot's wrist. So you can, once you've got that mate connector on there, you can tell where the end of the robot is at, at any time just by clicking on that and seeing the point down here. And that works for other things too. Like if you wanted to see uh, where is a point for the robot to touch, like, you know, could the robot maybe grab this blue cylinder? Just click on the blue cylinder. Um, you kind of have to get in. Okay, there. We clicked on it, it says diameter 0.1 meters, but if we click show measure details, it'll show where the center of it is. So that's actually the centroid of the object, but in general, it gets you close enough that you kind of have an idea, you know, if the robot can touch it or not. So this is a way that you can check to see if a robot is adequate for the needs of the cell or be able to rearrange things in the cell so that the robot can reach it if you're limited to a specific robot. Now, caveat here, OnShape is a free software, and so sometimes it just doesn't quite work right. And so sometimes you have to just like grab the nose of the robot and kind of drag it closer to where you want um, and then do the mate and then it'll work if it doesn't work properly the first time. But their technical support is also extremely helpful. So if for some reason you had a question, um, then you can share it. You want to turn on the share with OnShape support button and close that and then you would want to message technical support so you go to help menu um, you can go to help or report a bug and if for some reason something isn't working you can get um, in touch with technical support that way and they usually answer you back within a day they're actually very helpful so I would recommend that um, if you are really struggling with something so that is all for today. Hope this video was helpful.